In this video, we'll take a look at performance calculations in the Hyperhistorian, a powerful capability that allows you to easily unlock insights from your data. Data historians have evolved from pure storage applications into cornerstones of modern data visualization platforms. Their ability to efficiently store vast amounts of time series data allows an organization to store business and operations information at a high resolution. Storing data is great, but how do you make it easy to use this data for analytics and predictions to assist your operations? This is where performance calculations come in. Performance calculations in the Iconics Data Historian allow you to perform analytical calculations on the data as it comes into the historian. And here's the really smart part. It also stores the results of these calculations right in the historian alongside your raw data. What this means is that you're generating your analytics automatically as you ingest your data and storing it for easy future retrieval. So now you no longer need to write and maintain a complex query in Excel or another reporting tool, which continually recalculates formulas as it operates on the raw data pulled from the historian. Instead, accessing this data becomes a much simpler task, which can be managed by anyone in the organization. Let's take a look at some simple examples. I have a site that operates two pumps and a tank. My tank gives me two signals, its capacity and current level. The pumps provide me with an efficiency signal, a status signal, a mode, and a running signal. From these few signals, I'd like to generate some more useful information for my operators. The first bit of information I'm interested in is how much time has the pump spent running today? This would be a useful value for the maintenance team to understand the operating profile of the asset. Without a performance calculation, I would need to extract the raw data for the running signal and then aggregate the values and present it back to the user in a batch fashion. Instead, I can do the following in the historian. I can add a new calculated tag to the asset and call it runtime. I'd like the output to be a time-based value, so I'll set the data type to be duration, and I'd like to evaluate this calculation every minute. So I'll set up a trigger to fire this calculation every one minute. Now I need to create the calculation. As you can see from the function list, there's a vast array of functions built into the historian, from array and data value functions through to history and metadata functions. If that wasn't enough, the historian also allows you to plug in your own calculation functions. For this particular calculation though, the built-in functions will suffice. I'm looking for the time that the running signal has been set to true, so I'll select the tad time state one function, which allows me to specify a data signal, a start time, and an end time for the calculation, and the percentage of good quality samples I need for this calculation to return a value. I'll select the pump running tag, and since I'm after today's runtime, the start time will be today at midnight, and the end time will be now or more accurately, when the trigger fires. I'll set the quality to zero so that any data points available will return a value for me. And that's it. The calculation will start evaluating and being stored directly into the historian every minute. I can do a similar calculation to work out the number of times the pump has started today. Again, a useful metric for my maintenance team. I'll create another calculator tag. And this time, use a different function, tag trans, which will count the number of transitions the historical data makes from 0 to 1. For the tank, I'd like to create a slightly more complex calculation that will allow the system to predict 
based on the historical fill rate of the tank, how long before the tank is filled. For this calculation, I'll use the tag delta function. First, I'll set up the trigger to run every 30 seconds and set my return data type to a number. I can then start to build up my calculation. I'll start off with an if then else statement, since I only want this calculation to evaluate if the tank is filling. For the if, I need to evaluate whether the tank is actually filling or not, so I'll use the tag delta function to check if it returns a positive value. I need to plug in the tank level data signal, and then for the end time, I'll select now, and for the start time, I'll choose an offset by using now minus a certain number of seconds. I could put a value of 30 in here, since the calculation is triggered every 30 seconds, but to make it a little more flexible, I'll use the name of the trigger to determine the offset. This means that if I later change the trigger, the calculation will automatically adjust. So now I need to work out the prediction, which will be of the form capacity minus current level divided by rate of change over my trigger period multiplied by that trigger period. To finish this, I need to return a value in the else part of the statement, so we'll just return a minus 1. Now that these calculations are configured in the historian, I can now use them in my visualization to provide additional information for my operators. As you can now see in the mimic, my predicted value and pump analytics are now ready for use very simply and easily and all using the power of performance calculations. To learn more, connect with us at the links below.